Hi guys, welcome to your E2 task of the week for IELTS. My name is Alex and I'm one of the expert teachers here at E2 Language. Well, you've been asking and we've been listening. So here it is. This week's task of the week is IELTS listening section three, multiple choice. In today's class, I'll give you an overview of listening section three. Of course, we're going to practice multiple choice. Then we'll review those questions with the script. And at the end, I'll recap some of the important vocab from the task. Listening section three, let's talk about it. So in general, you're going to get 10 questions and you can expect to have two, three, maybe four speakers. And it's always in an academic context. So you might hear students discussing a presentation, a tutor giving feedback to a student, classmates planning a project and so on. Sometimes the speakers agree and sometimes they will disagree or they might change their mind as they're speaking. Section three is also tough because it often involves multiple choice questions. Why are multiple choice questions so difficult? Well, we get requests all the time for this question type. So I'm going to show you how it works and how to do well in this part of the test. One reason they're so tough, particularly in section three, is that there is a lot of text to read and not much time to do it. Another factor is that there are three possible options. And even though there's only one correct answer, the speakers will often mention information or say vocabulary from the two incorrect options. So the answer may be B, but you'll hear vocabulary from A and C, and these are called distractors. You've probably heard this word before, distractors. What are they? Are they just a cruel trick by IELTS? Not really. Let me explain how they work. Imagine you have this question in a test. What color is Jenny's cat? A, black, B, gray, C, ginger. And then you hear this little conversation. Jenny, what color is your cat? My cat is gray. Wonderful, we know here that the answer is gray, of course. But if you couldn't speak English at all, you could probably guess this answer just from the sound of the words. And I could probably guess this answer in your language, even though I don't speak it at all. So multiple choice questions are not interested at all in this superficial surface meaning. A multiple choice question is testing, do you understand deeply what you're hearing? So you're more likely to get a question and answer like this. Jenny, what color is your cat? I really wanted a ginger cat, but our couch is gray. So I decided on a black one and the answer would be black. So now that we've made peace with multiple choice, let's do a practice. And by the way, every week in our live classes, we tackle listening and break it down. Remember, you can access some of our live classes when you sign up for free at e2language.com and access all of our live classes, eight per week, as well as recorded classes. Submit your work for feedback, get one-on-one -on -one tutorials, uh, chat with me and our other experts when you upgrade your subscription. But for now, let's practice. We're just doing four questions today. I'm going to read through the first one with you and give you some time to look at 22, 23 and 24 before we hear the recording. Question 21, how did Jamie choose the topic for her presentation? Remember, we're in an academic context here. So at university, Jamie's probably a student talking to a tutor or a professor. How did she choose the topic? A, she saw a film about it. B, the issue has been in the media recently. Or C, one of her parents is an expert on it. Pause the video now for 30 seconds and read through 22, 23, and 24. Ready? We're gonna do the first question together. Here it is. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for coming in today. And let me start by saying well done on a really great presentation. Oh, thank you. I was actually very impressed with the class overall, and I could see you'd put in a lot of work. I sure did, but I must say it was surprisingly enjoyable. That's good. 
Now, your topic was genetically modified food and the controversy surrounding it on both sides of the political divide. That's right. So, how did you come to settle on this topic? Was it because of all the articles about GM food in the papers recently? I actually felt like the issue has dropped out of the public consciousness lately. I haven't seen an article on it in the mainstream media for a long time. I do remember that my dad used to get so furious reading all about the plans to expand GM crops and imports. I see. When I saw that movie by The Naturalist, ah, I forget his name, The Soil Expert. I guess that's when I really got interested, and my presentation just flowed from there. Yes, I know the one. It won several awards. So did you know much about GM food prior to your research? Do you think you got the right answer? Let's have a look with the script now and check. The professor said, so how did you come to settle on this topic? Was it because of all the articles about GM food in the papers recently? Articles in the papers. This sounds like it could be option B, but is this why Jamie chose the topic? Let's keep going. Jamie says, I actually felt like the issue has dropped out of the public consciousness lately. I haven't seen an article on it in the mainstream media for a long time. So actually, Jamie did not choose the topic for her presentation because it's been in the media. She hasn't seen it in the media for a long time. B is a classic distractor. Wrong answer. Let's keep going. We've got A or C. She saw a film or one of her parents is an expert. She went on to say, I do remember that my dad, my parent, my dad used to get so furious reading all about the plans to expand GM crops and imports. So we're mentioning her parent here, but is her parent, is her dad an expert? No, he just used to get annoyed hearing about it. So it's not C. This Eliminates B and C means the answer must be A, but let's keep listening and check. When I saw that movie by the naturalist, I forget his name, the soil expert, that's when I really got interested. My presentation flowed from there. So the correct answer is A. Easy, right? Now it's over to you. I'll play the recording all the way through. Answer questions 22, 23 and 24. Good luck. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for coming in today. And let me start by saying well done on a really great presentation. Oh, thank you. I was actually very impressed with the class overall, and I could see you'd put in a lot of work. I sure did. But I must say, it was surprisingly enjoyable. That's good. Now, your topic was genetically modified food and the controversy surrounding it on both sides of the political divide. That's right. So how did you come to settle on this topic? Was it because of all the articles about GM food in the papers recently? I actually felt like the issue has dropped out of the public consciousness lately. I haven't seen an article on it in the mainstream media for a long time. I do remember that my dad used to get so furious reading all about the plans to expand GM crops and imports. I see. When I saw that movie by The Naturalist, ah, I forget his name, The Soil Expert. I guess that's when I really got interested, and my presentation just flowed from there. Yes, I know the one. It won several awards. So did you know much about GM food prior to your research? I would thought I was an expert, but what I realised through my reading for this presentation was that I'd had a really biased attitude. I mean, I was only really aware of one half of the argument. I never read anything by people who were in favour of GM technology. It's obvious now, but I don't think I really understood the different views on the matter. Yes, that can happen, particularly these days with the way our social media is curated. How do you mean? Well, everyone's social media is increasingly personalised. The news stories that appear on your Facebook feed, for instance, tend to reflect the political or social views you hold. Yeah, I guess you're right. What do we do about that, though? I mean, we can't just disregard everything we see, right? How do we know which stories to trust? Only mainstream media? It's more a matter of consciousness, I would say. As long as you understand the way modern marketing and media work and their strategies, you can make informed choices about what you read and how far you trust it. Do remember that mainstream media also has its biases. 
Of course, that's true. Now back to your presentation. I made notes which I'll send through with your final grade, but I'm interested to know how you feel about it. Were there any areas that you were disappointed in? I know you'd been anxious about the technology side of things. I was. Last time I did a presentation for my history subject, it was a disaster. How so? I think I was just way too ambitious with the tech on that occasion. I had moving graphics and audio and video, and in the end, it just distracted from what I really wanted to say. That certainly wasn't the case this time, though. No, I think that's what I'm unhappy about. I was so put off by the previous experience that I went for just bare bones this time. It was very rudimentary, really. I wish I'd aimed a bit higher. Well, that's something to keep in mind for next time. Yeah, a good lesson, I guess. Do you think you got all the questions correct? Let's have a look and analyze the script as we do it. I'm using the script because I want to show you the distractors and how they are worked in here. So question 22, Jamie says that before this presentation, she was indifferent, she was strongly in favor, or she only knew one side of the argument. Here is the start of the script. The professor says, did you know much about GM food prior to your research? Jamie, I thought I was an expert, but I, what I realised through my reading for this presentation was that I'd had a really biased attitude, a biased attitude. Do you know this word? It means one-sided. So the answer cannot be A, she was indifferent. She was not indifferent. She was very strongly one-sided. So we can remove A here. Jamie goes on, I mean, I was only really aware of one half of the argument. This sounds like C, right? I had never read anything by people who were in favour of GM technology. It's obvious now, but I don't think I really understood the different views on the matter. So was she strongly in favour of GM food? No. She only knew one side of the argument. She never read anything by people who were in favor of GM technology. So notice how the distractors are working there. You probably heard the word favor and heard the word different, but these are not the same meaning as option A and option B. So 22, the answer is C. Question 23 now in relation to social media, the professor advises Jamie to A, ignore articles with political messages, be aware of the techniques marketers use or trust only stories from mainstream media. Let's see the script here. All right, the professor introduces the idea of social media. That can happen particularly these days with the way our social media is curated. Jamie asks, how do you mean? Professor, well, everyone's social media is increasingly personalized, blah, blah, blah. We haven't got anything yet about what the professor advises Jamie to do. So let's keep going. Jamie says, I guess you're right. What do we do about that though? I mean, we can't just disregard or ignore everything we see, right? How do we know which stories to trust? Only mainstream media. So I'm hearing vocabulary here from ABC, but remember that the question is asking me about the professor. What does the professor advise? So all this stuff from Jamie is actually irrelevant. The professor, it's more a matter of consciousness, I would say. As long as you understand the way modern marketing and media work and the strategies, you can make informed choices about what you read and how far you trust it. Do remember that mainstream media also has its biases. So option A, did the professor advise her to ignore articles with political messages? No, that's not mentioned at all. Did the professor C say only trust stories from mainstream media? No, on the contrary, mainstream media has its biases. The answer is B, be aware, be conscious of the techniques of marketers. For question 24, I'm gonna show you the script and the correct answer, but this time I want you to tell me why that answer is correct and what the two distractors are in the script. Pop it in the comments below. 24, what does Jamie say about using technology in this presentation? 
She found it harder than she'd expected. She should have been more ambitious or she felt it distracted from her message. Really key word in the question here is this presentation because Jamie talks about a presentation she did before for history and compares it to this presentation. Here is the script. Read through, look for the answer and the two distractors. The conversation continues. The professor asks how so. Again, read through, find the distractors and the answer. Final bit of the script. And the answer, hopefully you got it right, is B. So let me know in the comments, why is it B? Why not A? Why not C? Here are all the questions. Here are the answers, A, C, B, B. How did you go? Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, comment, share. We're always listening. So if you've got something that you'd like us to cover in an upcoming task of the week, just pop it down below. If you wanna know when our live classes happen, uh, we have them twice a day over on e2language.com, so you can register there and sign up for each live class. Live classes on YouTube happen spontaneously, so just make sure that you're a subscriber and we'll let you know when we're going live. During the class today, if you didn't get all the answers correct, perhaps it was a matter of vocab. Here's a list of the vocabulary that was really important to know to answer the questions today. Write down these words and let me know how are you going to remember these words? How are you going to use them? You could pop them into your speaking as well and into your writing. This kind of vocabulary is part of your IELTS preparation. Every day you need to learn some new words. So this is your word list for today. By the way, guys, remember to submit your writing for the chance to be selected for live writing feedback. How does it work? Let me explain. You're gonna submit your essay via the link below and be sure to sign up as a free member at e2language.com and come along to our free live class on April 12th. In that class, I'm gonna go through three of the essays that I've selected and show you the good things and the not so good things and show you how to get a seven or an eight. Here is the topic you should write about. Grab a screenshot or write it down and remember to submit your essay by the 5th of April and sign up at e2language.com for our live class on April the 12th. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week on another task of the week. Happy studying.